Hello and welcome to Game Again. As always, my name is Jack, and I am joined by the evil Scotsman. Hello. There we go. And we are here to discuss Morden Kanan presents Monsters of the Multiverse, the new book for D and D Five E. Uh, we tried to do we tried to do this over on Evil Scotsman's Twitch, uh, but it wasn't quite working out. Um, so we are moving to my Twitch because. There are uh, construction works in our area and it's affected his internet. Uh, but because I have a different provider, I have been lucky enough to be unaffected, which means we can still at least do this podcast. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going to download it afterwards and send you it so you can put it on your Twitch or YouTube, should you wish to. Um, but uh, yes, uh, so let me go over and read the thing again. Uh, for those who are uh, didn't uh, don't know what Morden Kanan's Monsters of the Universe is, it is the new expansion for D and D Beyond, not D and D Beyond, D and D Five E. Uh, it is going to replace. I'm going to do a much more condensed version, by the way, this time. Uh, it's going to replace Volo's Guide to Monsters and Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. It's got thirty races, two hundred and fifty monsters, and it takes all of the races and monsters from settings like Eberron, Ravenenka and the other one that I cannot remember off the top of my head, and brings them into uh, a, a way that you can use it in any setting on any world uh, in the multiverse. Um, and it makes playable races relevant for any class. Um, and it uh, apparently gives many monsters more damage and resiliencies improving the organization and improving the organization of monster stats but would you like but uh, i know that evil scotsman has more opinions on it than i do so i'm going to let him take the lead on this so as a dm this book is purely emotional damage um yeah this book hurts a lot uh not for the reason you think though so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a couple of the playable races that have been swapped, and then we'll go through a couple of the monsters that have been altered, as yeah. Vince is with me. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go to d Beyond, we're going to create a character of any of these races. Um, I'm going to create them using the Monsters of the Multiverse options and Evil Scotsman is going to do the original ones from Volo's Guide to Monsters, Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, Evil Elemental Player's Guide or Elemental Evil Player's Guide um, Basically just every other source book Yeah Oh, oh shit Okay, um, I have access to Monsters of the Multiverse character? That is because well, there's a there's a campaign where I'm DMing. Well, I was DMing that you're in, so you get access to them all because I'm I'm content sharing in that. That's only on my own channel, no. So, but I I have I have options for things that I. Yeah, that's what because we create the character via. No, no, I I I've got access to the stuff if I just go in to create a character. I don't have it anymore. Oh. It's because the campaign. That's fine. Not a problem. You can take it. So, what will we start with? The Kenku. Already there. I have that. I I have that character sheet open, so I can just go into the builder anyway. <laughs> so, Kenku is originally from Volo's Guide to Elemental. It is indeed. Okay, apparently Fairy has been updated, period, without reading the book. Because yes. Fairy is now only under Mod Guide to Link Monsters of the Multiverse. Uh, same with Harringen. Harringen gets swapped to Mutant Axe. But I don't think they actually changed any of them, I just think they put them in that book. So, that's a bit sus. Okay, right, so let's go Kenku. Now, I'm not going to go through any, like, every single thing that's changed. I'm just going to go for the, we'll go straight to the main page. Right with you. 
completely fine with that because uh, that's the only real changes there are anyway. So. I've got here whatever their true origin, Kenku are most often found in the Shadow Fell and the Material Plane. They tend to have the coloration typical of ravens. Racial traits expert duplication, Kenku recall, and mimicry. So, Kenku training and Kenku recall are different. As a bit of background, no, I guess, fair enough. Uh, Dex score increased by two, wisdom by one. Uh, no, for for me here it is using the Tasha's options, so I can increase to three by one, one by two, and one by one. So I got the option to increase three scores, increase two scores, one 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 or two one. Yeah, I don't have that here. <laughs> so they're, they just don't age anymore. Uh, they're about 5 feet tall and weigh between 90 and 130 pounds. Your size is medium? Uh, size is medium or small. You can choose the size when you select this race. Speed. Your walking speed is 30. Walking speed is indeed 30. So, expert forger, you can duplicate other creatures' handwriting or craft work. You have advantage on all checks made to produce forgeries or duplicate an existing one. When you copy writing or craft work produced by yourself or someone else, you have advantage on any ability checks you make to produce an exact duplicate. So I think it's the same thing, just a different name. Yeah, it's, no, no, that's expert forgery. This is expert duplication. Okay. But when you copy writing or craft work. Okay. So. Uh, thanks to you, your supernaturally good memory, you have proficiency in two skills of your choice. Moreover, when you make an, a, a check in any using any skill in which you have proficiency, you can give yourself an advantage on the check before rolling the d20. You can give yourself advantage in the this any number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest, and you can pretty much just choose any. Like this drop down list has ammo handling, arcana, ac athletics, acrobatics, deception, history, insight, intimidation, investigation, medicine, nature, persuasion, religion, survival. Um, because I, I'm just using the character sheet. I was a red. I had built up for doing these tests. The ones that aren't there are ones I already had proficiency, proficiency in because I made it as a rogue. So like, you know, sleight of hand. So basically. It would appear so. Okay. Mimic. You can mimic sounds you have heard, including voices, a creature that hears a sound. You may tell you are an imitation. You make a successful wisdom insight check opposed to your charisma deception check. Uh, you can accurately mimic sounds you've heard, including voices, a creature that hears the sounds you make can tell they are imitations only with a successful wisdom insight check against a DC of 8, plus your proficiency bonus, plus your charisma modifier. Okay, so those are completely changed then. So instead of now needing to roll higher than neighbour, you would probably want to keep the DC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you can read and write common and foreign, but you can speak only by using your mimic function. The best bit about being a fence is. Uh, it does not have any of that here in description it gives me an option for a language uh, let's see your character can speak read and write common and one other language that you and your dm agree is appropriate for the character the player's handbook offers a list of languages to choose from the dm is free to modify that list for a campaign and for the purposes of <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> and for the purposes yeah. of building this character sheet, I set it as Abyssal because it was the first option. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That that changes. No. Just no. But fair enough. I can see why some of that was done. I can see where it came from. I I feel like you're no longer playing her as a tanker though. You're just playing a fighter character. Would appear so. Arakokra. Arakokra. Shall we go down that? Ah, we can do. Don't see why not. So the Arakokra is from the evil elemental evil player's guide. Yep. Just thought I would put that there. Um and let's bring up the character sheet I have for that. So Arakokra. I built this one as a monk for, for the, the, the purposes of this. Yeah. The first thing that you had in mind when you thought of this whole scene was that uh, Arakokra, sometimes called bird folk, was no spear fighter. A winged people who originated on the elemental plane of air, Arakokra soar through the sky wherever they wander. So basically, they fuck off to target, target, whatever them, racial trait, white battalion. White Talon, one collar. The fuck? Scrolling down. Ability score increase, I'm assuming the dex two and wisdom one is again using Tasha's? It is again using Tasha's, yeah. Okay. Uh, they reach maturity by age three compared to humans who don't usually live longer than six. I have none of that. Most are good and rarely choose sides when it comes to the law and care. Rebel leaders and warriors may, might be lawful, while explorers and adventurers might tend towards the dark. Uh, and Tasha's any alignment stuff is completely up to the player. Um, our Kokra are about 5 feet tall. They have thin, lightweight bodies and may decrease beauty in 100 pounds. Your size is medium. Uh, all I've got is your size is medium. I don't have all that extra. <laughs> your base walking speed was 25 feet. 30. You have a flying speed of 50 feet. These are creatures who can't be wearing medium armor. Because of your wings, you have a flying speed equal to your walking speed. You cannot use this flying speed if you're wearing medium or heavy armor. So they've given you 5 extra feet of walking and taken 20 feet off your flippers. Okay then. Now, fair enough. That's interesting. I, I don't know why that's a thing, but it's a thing. I mean, if I would... I would... I would see decreasing the flying speed to walking speed if they increased your walking speed more than just 5. See if they made it kind of roughly equal at about 40. Mm. Both ways. Then maybe. But not buffing, it, not buffing your walking speed by 20 and nerfing your flying speed by 20. Sorry, uh, buffing your walking speed by 5 and nerfing your flying speed by 20. So basically the only benefit to being an Arakokra would be that your wind therapy is better. Because literally everything they can do, Owlin can do while wearing heavy armor. Yeah. Okay. So, wait, you have some stuff here. Uh, Talon. So Talon's a natural weapon. It's weird to make unarmed strength. If you hit him, you deal slashing damage equal to 1d4 plus your strength modifier. You have talents that you can use to make unarmed strikes. When you hit with them, the strike deals 1d6 plus your strength modifier slashing damage, instead of the bludgeoning damage normal for an unarmed strike. So if he's given an extra 2 on top of your d6, you know, okay, fair enough. You can speak, read, and write common Arakokra and Orin. Uh... Uh, speak, read, write, common in one other language that your DM agrees is appropriate for the character. Player's handbook offers a list of languages. DM is free to modify that list. Fair enough. You're losing a language. You're losing 20 feet movement to get a 1d6 instead of a 1d4. And uh, 5 feet extra walking. Speed. Yep, and you've also got wind collar. Um, starting at third level, you can cast the gust of wind spell with this trait. 
without requiring a material component. Once you cast a spell with this trait, you cannot do so again until you finish a long rest. You can also cast the spell using any slots you have of second level or higher. Intelligence, Wisdom or Charisma is your spell casting ability for it. When you cast Gust of Wind with this trait, choose when you select this race. Uh, I've got Goblin and Changeling ready to go, but if there's any particular ones that you want to look at, it is literally just Goblin. From Volo's Guide to Monster. Uh, many goblins pursue their own destinies, escaping the plots, escaping the plots of both archfey and gods. I will say one thing I do like about, like for sure, without anything else, without looking at anything else regarding goblins, I do like the the race portrait picture for the goblins more. I think it does look a bit more badass. Like that, that definitely looks like a barbarian or a fighter. Is that the big nose with the swelling face, red eyes, upturned eyeballs? Uh, no, it's like red hair feather thing. I don't know if it's actually its own hair or uh, if it's I will have a look at some point. spiky um, so shoulder pads, big scar, well, I don't know if it's scar or war paint, big black thing across its face, one eye, looking very angry. Yep, definitely sounds like a barbarian. <laughs> so, racial traits, dark vision, yep. fury of small, mm -hmm. nimble of great. Uh, yes, uh, it now also has fey ancestry. Yep, same with language, uh, common plus one. Okay. So and alignment is alignment is uh, player choice as well. Okay. So uh, ability score would normally be dex two, con one. Uh, so age goblins reach adults at the age of eight unless cast by uh, It doesn't have any age things for any of them. You are small. Okay. Speed. Base walking speed is 30. 30. Dark vision. You can see in dim light within 60 feet of you as if it were bright light. And dark mm. is as if it were dim light. You can't discern rate, colour and darkness or other digital plane. Indeed. Uh, it says here you discern colours in that darkness only shades of grey. Uh, it says here now you discern colors as shades of gray. Okay, so the original wording is you cannot discern colors in darkness, only shades of gray. So they've just worded it slightly. Okay. Yeah, I think it, what what they're trying to say is if you can, if you were to hold, if you were to have a light, and then memorize the shade of gray versus that color when you hold the light. Uh, you would be able to, like, with enough practice, you could probably figure out what shade, of, what colour you're looking at based on the shade of grey. I think that's kind of what they're meaning. I don't know. I think that would be DM discretion in that case, at that point. Yeah. So, Fury of the Small. When you damage a creature taking the attack or spell and take a size larger than yours, you can cause the attack or spell to deal extra damage to the creature. The extra damage equals your level. Once you use this trait, you can't use it again until size or short or larger. When you damage a creature with an attack or a spell and the creature size is larger than yours, you can cause the attack or spell to deal extra damage to the creature. The extra damage deals your proficiency bonus. You can use this trait a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, regaining all expended uses when you finish a long rest. You can use it no more than once per turn. That I I'm kind of for and against that. Instead of only being using it once per long rest, 
they've nerfed it and you can use it as many times as your proficiency bonus. Roll level. Up to about level five. Yeah. You're you're better off with the gear that you've got most of the time. But after level five, add my flat five to twenty damage onto your attack. Would make for a great playmate. Yeah. Uh, number of kicks, you can take from disengage or hide action and have a bonus action to empty your kick out. Indeed. Uh, Fey Ancestry is the only difference here. Um, you have advantage on saving throws you make to avoid or end the charmed condition upon yourself. Uh, uh, okay. What is next? Let's see. Can I ch Changeling. Who are originally from Eberron. Seems like you can shift your face and form with a thought as a form of artistic and emotional expression. Uh, for some changelings, a new face is only a disguise. For other changelings, a new face re may reveal an aspect of their soul. <laughs> so poetic. Changing and pleasing instinct. Uh, same. Instinct. Same. Uh, now, normally the charisma uh, would be. Uh, normally the ability to support instincts would reduce charisma by two. One other ability of your choice by one. Again, using Tasha's. Yeah. Um, so, shape change action. As an action, you can change your appearance and your voice to be deterministic specific of the changes, including your coloration, hair length, and sex. You can also adjust your height and weight, but not so much that your size changes. You can make yourself appear as a member of another race, though none of your game statistics change. You can't replicate the appearance of a creature you've never seen, so you must adopt a form that has the same basic arrangement of limbs that you have. Your clothing and equipment aren't changed by this trait. You stay in your new form until you use an action to revert to your true form, or until you die. Uh... Pretty much all the same, with the exception of you can also adjust your height and weight and change your size between medium and small. So you can. That's fucking. That's. That's broken. Like, from an RP perspective, not so much like combat or anything, but being able to make yourself a dwarf when you can run around as a human. Uh, changeling instinct, gain proficiency with saving throw the skills of your choice, deception, insight, intimidation, and persuasion. Uh, and performance now. Okay, right, fair enough. And you can speak, read, and write common and two other languages of your choice. Uh, same as Tasha's, uh, common plus one. Uh, uh, you can now change your select your size, which is why you can change your size between medium and small. You are medium or small. Uh, choose this size when you select the race. Oh, okay. So it's pretty much change it at any fucking point. Yeah. Um, who else you got on this? That's all the ones I have ready to go, but I can. I can do any other ones you want. What else you got? Uh, let's see. Create and character. Uh, standard race S filter sources monsters of the universe uh, Asimar, Erganasi, Bugbear Centaur, Deep Gnome uh, I'm going to regret this list let's look at my character favourite looking at the Bugbear Volvo Bridge, Monsters, Bugbear Bugbear's feature in the Nightmare Tales of Mary Wake great scary beast that creeps through the shadows in a quiet pit. It's me! Literal me! Racial traits. Dark vision, long limbs, fair build, sneaky and protective. Despite their formidable build, bugbears are quiet skulkers thanks to a fey magic that allows them to hide in spaces seemingly far too small for them. Uh, racial traits. Dark vision, fey ancestry, long limbed, powerful build, sneaky and surprise attack. Tasha's, your spread is reduced by two, your dexterity one. 
indeed tasha's yet yeah uh, they reach adulthood at age 16 and live up to 80 years oh it doesn't give me anything for that uh we have been we have been uh glossing i've been glossing over one a creature type has been for all of them with the exception of the goblin uh, they've all been humanoid or uh yeah they've all been humanoid uh, with the exception of the changeling which is fey um same with the goblin here i'm assuming the bugbear now goblin and bugbear are humanoid but are also considered goblinoid for any prerequisite or effect that requires you to be a goblinoid fair enough size is medium Bears are between eight feet tall to six and eight feet tall. Weigh between two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty pounds and medium. Great squatting speed is thirty. Thirty. Good for being done light for sixty feet. Sixty feet. You can make a melee attack on your turn. Your reach for it is five feet greater than normal, which is what hits all of them. In the monk. Indeed, same. Powerful build, you count as one size larger when determining your size, dash trait, and the weight you can push, drag, or lift. Yep. Your proficient in stealth skills. Uh, yes. In addition, without squeezing, you can move through and stop in a space large enough for a small creature. Yep. If you spot a creature and hit it with an attack on your first turn of combat, the attack deals an additional 2d6 damage to it. You can use this trait only once per combat. And if you hit a creature with an attack roll, the creature takes an extra 2d6 damage if it hasn't taken a turn in the current combat. Which I think is pretty much the same as it, it works the worded same differently. As, it works the same as the assassin. Or rogue. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and obviously speed and might, common, goblin. common in a language that you and your DM decide is appropriate. Uh, also uh, have advantage on saving throws in order to Avoid or end the charmed condition upon yourself. Because Fey Ancestry. Charmed is now fucking useless. Oh yeah, if anything's Fey Ancestry, it's everything has advantage on it. Goblin, it's got very good spells and stuff. <laughs> right, what else we got that's been changed? Uh once more first right, so uh what have we not done yet? Asamar chat with appearance and whatnot because they are permanently changed. Yeah, uh, Asimar, Erganasi, Centaur, Deep Gnome, Durgar, Earthganasi, Eladrin, Furball, Farganasi, Githyanki, Githziari, Goliath, Hobgoblin, Kobold, Lizardfolk, Minotaur, Orc, Satyr, Sea Elf, Shatterkai, Shifter, Tabaxi, Tortle, Triton, Waterganasi, and Yuan Ti. Although the difference between Yuan Ti and the one from follows is that's you anti pure blood i don't know how much difference that will make if they've just removed the pure blood part of the name or not but uh um, so let's have a look at this i've got a yonti pure blood here the separate creature known as the yonti are all that remains of an ancient decadent human empire uh, blessed with resistance to magical and poisonous effects by the rituals that created them each of these yuanti manifest their serpentine heritage in a variety of ways Racial traits, dark vision, innate stealth weapons, magic resistance, and poison immunity. Dark vision, magic resistance, poison resilience, and serpentine spellcasting. Ooh. Did you say poison resilience? Mm-hmm. Ooh, that is sick. So I'm assuming the game uses passive. It does indeed. Two, which does it by one. Uh, pure bloods mature at the same rate as humans and have similar lifespans. They are humanoid. <laughs> Pure bloods match humans in average size and weight. Your size is medium. Uh, you are medium or small. Choose the size when you select this race. What the fuck? Why did they make everything small? <laughs> uh, your base walking speed is 30 feet. Your base slithering speed is 30 feet. <laughs> it doesn't actually, it says walking speed. I decided to use slithering because most UNT uh, are snakes at the bottom. So, like Nagas. So, I decided to do that one myself. <laughs> 60 feet. Yeah. So, innate spellcasting. You know the poison spray cancer. You can cast animal friendship an unlimited number of times with this trait, but you can target only snakes with it. <laughs> Starting at third level, you can also cast suggestion with this trait. Once you cast it, start negotiating a game and play spells along with it. There's no spellcasting ability for these spells. You uh, So, serpentine spellcasting. 
You know the poison spray can trip, cast animal friendship an unlimited number of times with this trait, but can indeed only target snakes with it. Third level, you can also cast suggestion with this trait. Once you cast it, you cannot do so again until you finish a long rest. You can also cast it using any spell slots you have of second level or higher. Intelligence, wisdom, or charisma is your spell casting ability for these spells. When you cast them with this trait, choose your trait when you select this race. Uh, sorry, choose your uh, modifier when you select this race. Add magic resistance. You have advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. You have advantage on saving throws against spells. And other magical effects. Full stop. Oh shit. Okay, so other magical effects would include things like traps or cursed items or etc. etc. Not anymore. Uh, you are immune to poison damage on the poison condition. You have advantage on saving throws to you make to avoid or end a poison condition on yourself. You also have resistance to poison damage. That is uh, most unfortunate. You can speak even night common, ifrit, and tongue. Common plus one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they have uh, really fucked over the Yondus. What about uh, Warforge? Is this Warforge? Warforge was not on it, no. Oh, we can do, absolutely. Um, now, myself and Petra had a conversation about this earlier today. What's the list? Um, there's a couple I would like to uh, I would like to talk about. But just fuck you. That's the last. Uh, so it was the. Uh, we're going to start with the astral dread. Will we go A to Z of any ones that we we see? Yep, you're going to have to give me a minute though because unfortunately, I now I actually have to physically look up pictures of the original stat blocks because they have been removed. That's fine. That gives me time to get the ones that I know we're going to be looking at. Do you know something that's not in here that I'm surprised isn't actually in here? Mind flares. No, they are untouchable right now. Because Baldur's Gate. Yep. <laughs> they have literally just released a massive fucking game about it. Where they change too much on mind flares, the game would be fucked. I actually thought they would bring in changes to align it more with the game, any changes that the game has made. That's actually what I was... that we know of. Don't forget, it's only like the first act of the game that's available right now. Okay, so... Oh! Grungs have been changed as uh, monsters. That doesn't surprise me at all. But Grung as a playable character has not. I would like to have a look at Grung at some point, now that I've noticed that. But we'll start with the Astral Dreadnought. Alrighty, here we go. I need to make sure I can find the original Grung stat block. I probably have it. 
Because I think I have one grung above. Sources. Oh, I don't have the compendium content for it. I will get it. I mean, it's only three dollars. So, shall we? Uh, yes, I'm just buying the one grung above uh, compendium content, which gives me stat blocks for them. first thing we're going to be talking about is the actual grim map, which is a gargantuan monstrosity of creatures. Is it right? It is indeed. Now, I cannot remember what the fucking book was called. There was an error completing the transaction. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to buy it because you know where it is. Probably. I mean, it's not one of the ones that said it was replacing. No, no. But it has, in fact, replaced it. Ah, oh, well. I'm sure I can find it somewhere. There we go. So, it's AC is 20, yes? So, uh, yep. Actual Grimlock, Gargantuan Monstrosity. Unaligned. It has an armor class of 20, which is only the extra reality. Indeed it is. Uh, on you go. 197 hit points, 17 d20 plus 119. That is unchanged. Speed of 15, flying speed of 80, bit of gear hover. Indeed. Um, strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. In order, we've got a 28, 7, 25, 5, 14, and an 18. Indeed. Saving throws, dex 5, res 9. Yep. Strength perception plus nine. Indeed. Damage resistance is twenty. Your class is from non magical attack. You are correct. Conditional immunity. Charmed, exhausted, frightened, paralyzed, terrified, frozen, stunned, stunned. That's <laughs> the same here. Gotta trust you, man. Senses, dark vision one twenty, uh, perception nineteen. One twenty nineteen. Languages your fucking mother. It's just a slash here, so <coughs> it does not want to talk to you. Challenge rating of 21, perception saving of 3. Indeed, with a proficiency bonus of plus 7. Oh, is this. It, it doesn't say what proficiency it is. It just. Doesn't say. Okay, so, abilities. Anti magic core. A 154 cone? Yep, magic dreadlock. Fiction with Ang creates a barrier of anti magic, as in the anti magic shield itself. For the 150 foot cone, at the start of each of its turns, the dreadnought decides which way the cone faces. The cone doesn't function when the dreadnought, uh, the dreadnought's eye is closed or while the dreadnought is blinked. Same. Okay, astral entity, that's the dreadnought, can't read the astral plane, nor can it be banished or otherwise transported out of the astral plane. That is correct. Demi Planar Dungeon. Any creature or object that the Astral Dreadnought swallows is transported to the Demi Plane, but it can be entered by no other means except a wish spell or just a creature's dungeon visit ability. A creature can leave the Demi Plane. Creature can leave the demi plane only by using magic that enables the plane wheel travel, such as the plane shift spell. The demi plane resembles a cone of cold, roughly 1,000 feet in diameter, with a ceiling 100 feet high. 
I like a stomach. It contains the remains of the dreadnought. Oh, neat. The dreadnought cannot be harmed from within the Bremer plane. If the dreadnought dies, the Bremer plane disappears. And everything inside it appears a large corpse. It is otherwise intact. Almost the same. Uh, the demiplane can be entered by no other means except a wish spell, the dreadnought's bite, and dungeon uh, dungeon visit. That's the only difference. Uh, the bite can now take you there. Well, you said only the wish spell or the dungeon visit ability. Well, now it's bite attack can also send you there. It is. Because the changes to the bite action. Let's see, new regen. Legendary resistances, three times a day. If it fails the saving throw, it can give the throw you know what, I didn't fail, you failed. In indeed. Uh right. This is where I noticed it changed the error. Magic weapon. An astral trigger, special attacks, or magic. Uh, what I've got here instead is Sever Silver Cord. If the Dreadnought scores a crit against a creature travelling by means of the Astral Projection spell, the Dreadnought can cut the target Silver Cord instead of dealing damage. Yeah, but those were pretty fucking bad. I also like them. So, multi-attack. It can make two attacks, one with its bite so it can respond. Indeed. Melee weapon attack plus 16 can't reach 10 feet. One target, it hits plus 36 or 5d10 plus lightning piercing damage. If the target is a creature of cube size or smaller and this damage is dealt to it with no hit points or it is incapacitated, the Astral Dreadnought swallows it. The swallowed target, along with everything it's wearing and carrying, appears in the unoccupied space on the floor of the Astral Dreadnought Dungeon. Oh, so that's not a change to the bite attack then. Oh. <laughs> it's just because it caused cause when you were talking about the demi uh, demi dungeon, um, when you said it can only be entered by dungeon visit or wish spell, but if but it can be done to the bite attack as well. So it doesn't on your version it doesn't say the bite attack. Well, no, because you're dead. Right, but you can. This, but you're not dead. Could be incapacitated. Any creature or object that the astral dreadnought swallows is transported to a demi plane. It's literally in the game. <laughs> it's in the fucking description. Anyway, anyway, uh, bite is a melee weapon attack plus sixteen to hit. Reaches ten foot. One target hit thirty six or five d ten plus nine. Of force damage. So they have completely changed the damage dice. Right. Claw is melee weapon plus 16 to hit, reach 10 feet, one target, 3d6 plus 9. Plus 16 to hit, 20 feet, one target, 3d6 plus 9, force damage. Okay. Uh, I didn't write this, man. I know you didn't. One can be used at a time, and only it runs for one creature's turn. The game's quite tough. So, it can make a claw attack. It can indeed. Right, let's make this bite claw. It can also cast Dungeon Visit, which costs two actions. Mm -hmm. One creature that is huge or smaller, that mm -hmm. the Dark Astral Dreadnought is seen with its defeat, but it must succeed on a DC 19 charisma saving throw, or be magically teleported to an unoccupied space on the floor of the dungeon. When the target's next turn, the target appears in the space to the left of the nearest unoccupied space, if that space is occupied. Indeed. Magic projection, the creature, or the, each creature within 60 feet of the Astral Dreadnought must make a DC 19 wisdom saving throw, or taking 2d10 plus 4 psychic damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful save. Each creature within 60 feet of the Dreadnought must make a DC 19 wisdom save, 
taking 26 or 4d10 plus 4 psychic damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Okay, so I roll a bit of damage on that. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I just completely fucked up damage type. Okay, that one will not come out easy. Now, here comes the one I'm really looking forward to changing. What one? Jeremy Gorgon. Jeremy Gorgon. Cool. So, those of you who are in the unknown, Jeremy Gorgon, Prince of Demons, the Sergian Beast, the Master of Fire and Death, Jeremy Gorgon is the embodiment of chaos, madness, and destruction. Seeking to corrupt all that is good and undermine the order in his multiverse. See everything dragged howling into the internet for that one. I really like that. This is a fucking demon lord. Now, if my memory is correct, this is a demon lord, but other demon lords don't fuck with him. Just remember that. So, you extreme demon, chaotic demon. Indeed. Also, uh, King's King, thanks for the, the Prime sub, dude. I will see you in a couple of hours for DMB. Hey man, you're the DM. <laughs> That's why I'm so good. Uh, AC, 22 natural armor. Right, here's the one. Hit points, 496, 34 D12, plus 273. 464, 32 d12 plus uh, 256. Why have they taken health off of my boy? It has a uh, 50 foot movement speed plus 50 foot swimming. It does indeed. Strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. 29, 14, 26, 20, 17, 24. It is the same. Saving throws are Dex plus 10, Con plus 16, Wisdom plus 11, and Charisma plus 15. Again, correct. Skills, Insight 11, Dex 19. Indeed. Damage resistances are Cold Fire Lightning. Yeah. Immunity for poisons, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing that is my main. Indeed. And it is immune from the conditions Charmed, Exhausted, Frightened, and Poisoned. As I am trying to speak True Sight, Passive Perception of 21. It uh, has a passive perception of 29. Okay, so they took his health off him and made him a bit more vigilant. Uh, he knows languages. all the languages and has telepathy up to 120 feet. 126, 120 With a proficiency bonus of plus 8. So, already, just straight off the bat, there is... Um, they took his health off him. I mean, it's only like 30 points of health. I'll take 30 points of health off you, see if you can flee. I mean, considering I have one health point perpetually, uh, I'd rather you didn't. Indeed. Uh, so yeah, innate spellcraft. Uh, Jeremy Gorgon's spellcraft ability is Charisma. Spell save DC 23. Jeremy Gorgon can innately cast the following spells requiring no material components. Is that the same for you? Oh, that, that's right at the bottom of my actions list. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, Demigorgon, uh, Demigorgon casts one of the following spells requiring no material components using the charisma. Using charisma as a spell casting ability with spell save DC of 23. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you say one? You can cast one of the following spells. Yeah, I'm assuming it means one at a time. Okay. Not, not just one ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say, that's a few issues. Uh, well, detect magic and major image. Uh, yes, three times a day it can do dispel magic, fear, and telekinesis. And once a day it can do feeble-minded activation. Indeed. So, legendary resistances. I can tell you the fucking stuff in every language, which is true. Uh, three times a day, indeed it can. Uh, Demogorgon has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Indeed. And Demogorgon has advantage on saving throws against being blinded, deaf and stunned, or knocked unconscious due to its two heads. It's also got magic weapon. Yeah, weapon besides the magical. Uh, yeah, no. 
Uh, yep, yeah, uh, it can also replace one with the use of gaze. Got the same thing. Melee attack, 17 to hit, reach 10 feet, one target. Does 4d12 plus 9 bludgeoning damage if the target is a creature and must succeed on a DC 23 constitution saving throw. Or its hit point maximum is reduced by an amount equal to the damage taken. The reduction lasts until the target is no longer rest. The target dies if its hit point maximum is reduced. Tentacle, melee weapon attack plus 17 to hit, reach 10 feet, one target, hit for 28 or 3d12 plus 9 force damage. Everything everything else is the same. <laughs> oh, they're, they're nerfing my boy. Wait, did you say it was a DC 23 con save? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the same then. Well, my boy. What have they done to my boy? Uh, so, Gaze. The demigod is trained to lament and wail toward one creature that he can see within the 120 feet of him. The target must make a DC 23 wisdom saving throw. Unless the target is incapacitated, it can avert its eyes to avoid the gaze and to automatically take two damage from it. If the target does so, it can't see the demigod until the start of its next turn. If the target looks at him in the meantime, it must immediately make the save. If the target fails to save, the target suffers from one of the following effects of the demigod of choice. Alright then. I do not have that much text for that. Uh, Demigorgon turns his magic gaze towards one creature you can see within 120 feet of him. The creature must succeed a DC 23 wisdom save or suffer one of the following effects. Choose one or roll a D6. Do you realise that what that means is that he, uh, with that new one, you don't get the option to just not look at it? Beguiling gaze. The target is stunned until the start of the demigorgon's next turn, or until the demigorgon is no longer within melee range. Uh, indeed, yes, that's if you roll a 1 or a 2. Hypnotic gaze. The target is charmed by demigorgon until the start of the demigorgon's next turn. The demigorgon, or as known as the chosen kind of charm that the target uses as an action, reaction to movement. Because this gaze, gaze requires demigorgon to focus both heads on a target, he can't use his maddening gaze or his melee action until the start of his next turn. I, up until you said the word movement, yeah. It didn't have that last bit. Oh yeah. So basically, if he gets you before his next turn, bitch, you're going for a walk. <laughs> Probably to stab bloody Spartan ass. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, target is charmed by Demogorgon until the start of Demogorgon's next turn. Demogorgon char chooses how the charm target uses its action, reaction, and movement. That's that's it. Uh, and that's if you roll a 5 or a 6 on d6. Uh, for a 3 or a 4, you get Confusing Gaze. The target suffers the effect Confusion Spell. Uh, without making a saving throw, the effect lasts until the start of Demogorgon's next turn. Demogorgon doesn't need to concentrate on the spell. To make two, chooses one reaction to blow, only one at a time, etc. etc. Melee attack weapon of the tail, 17 to hit, reach 15, one target. 4d10 plus 9 bludgeoning damage plus 22 4d10 necrotic damage. Tail, melee weapon attack, plus 17 to hit, reach 15 feet, one target, hit 20 or 2d10 plus 9 bludgeoning damage, plus 11 or 2d10 necrotic damage. So it's, it's basically half the damage. Um, it uses its gaze action and must choose either the beguiling gaze or the insanity gaze or the maddening gaze. Demogorgon uses gaze and must use either beguiling gaze or confusing gaze, which I think is the same one anyway, so yes. Yeah. And cast a spell, cost two actions, Demogorgon uses spell casting. There's an additional one on this. So, this one is uh, painful for me because uh, I do love the Demogorgon. Um, what 
to it and forced it to force it. I'm sorry, if you just get bank slammed by a fucking pencil, it's not force damage. Oh god, that's rude. Um, but yeah, that is the delivery room. Who else you got? Uh, I have uh, Baphomet. Oh, this is another one that I really like, Baphomet. So I'm very concerned that her risk is gone. We haven't entered this yet, one. Baphomet, hello, danger stand unlocked. Thank you, Baphomet. Civilization is weakness and brutality is strength in the cradle of Baphomet, the horned king and the prince of beasts. He is worshipped by those who want to break the by those who want to break the confines of civility and unleash their bestial natures. For Baphomet envisions a world without restraint where creatures live out their most bloodthirsty desires. So as a huge fiend, <laughs> demon, chaotic evil. Yeah. Uh, 1822. Natural armor. Health, 203. Only 275? 319. Oh. Uh, speed 40 feet. 40 feet. So, strength, dex, con, intelligence versus charisma, and that order. 30, 14, 26, 18, 24, 16. It sounds like you're just reading out lottery numbers, mate. Uh, I've got the winning ticket. Saving throws, dex plus 9, con plus 15, wisdom plus 13. Indeed it is. Uh, skills are intimidation plus 17 and perception plus 14. And you resistant to cold, fire, and lightning. Indeed it is. And it's immune to poison, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing. That is non-magical. Exactly. So it's a condition you need to check the charm plus poison. poison. Uh, indeed. And it has true sight of 120 feet and passive perception of 24. Indeed, and it has a charge rating of 23 for 50,000 experience points. Exactly. With a proficiency yeah. bonus of plus 7, by the way. So we've got charge. If Baphomet moves at least 10 feet straight towards a target and then hits it with a go attack on the same turn, the target takes no dex. Now, remember my dex got class, we'll do it here for these ones. The target takes an extra 16 of 3d10 piercing damage. If the target is a creature, it must succeed on a DC 25 strength saving throw. I'll be pushed up to 10 feet away and that is it. Do you have the charm? Not in actions, I don't. Uh, not in actions. Legendary action? Because that's where it is. It is on this stat block. The fog is directly above and there is spell casting. Nope. It is very concerning. So do you have it? I do have charge, yes. Now, I'm just looking at the fact that... Um... Ah, never mind. Never mind. I was going to say... And the... Baphomet is not a spell. Therefore, if it hadn't been for the fact that it's specifically says it's only used for one, you could literally back start slap someone 25, 20 feet at a time. <laughs> 10 feet at a 10, 10 feet at a 10 feet. But uh, yeah, in the bit above actions, underneath the stat block bit, I have Labyrinthine Recall, Legendary Resistance, and Magic Resistance. Okay, so um, innate spell casting is Charisma, 17, 18. You've got the following. You've got Magic, Sweeping, at will, Detect Magic. Sweep into place with spell magic, dominate two, changes, hunter's mark, maze, brawler spells, one break spell, one break spell block. Uh, labyrinth. Uh, right, spell casting. Okay, uh, hold on. Uh, Baphomet casts one of the following spells requiring no material component and using the charisma sp uh, spell casting ability with a DC of 18. 
Uh, three times a day, dispel magic, dominate beast, maze, wall of stone, and once a day, teleport. Indeed. Yep. Yes. Is literally him holding a big fucking cleaver. Yeah. Right click at the start of your turn, Baphomet can gain advantage on all melee weapon attack rolls during that turn, but attack rolls against him have advantage until the start of his next turn. Nope. Oh, but he doesn't have record then? Nope. Uh, action tomorrow is fixed. Baphomet can make two attacks one with his heart cleaver. His big fuck off cleaver that's definitely a fucking weapon. That's um, not that's no longer magical. It is very much magical. Um one with his bite and one with I think it's a door attack. Heart cleaver. Melee weapon attack. Plus seventeen to hit. Reach for fifteen feet on target. Does twenty one, two D ten plus ten slashing damage. Okay, so multi attack. Baphomet does one bite attack, one gore attack, and one heart cleaver attack. He also uses frightful presence. Heart, heart cleaver, melee weapon attack, plus 17 to hit, reach 15 feet, one target, hit 21, or 2d10 plus 10, force damage. Fuck off. Bite, melee weapon attack, 17 to hit, reach 10 feet, one target, 2d8 plus 10, piercing damage. Yes. It's still piercing. Door. Melee weapon attack. 17 to hit. Reach 10 feet. One target. Hit. Or 2d6 plus 10. Piercing damage. Uh, let's see. Uh, melee weapon attack. 17 to hit. Reach 10 feet. One target. S uh, hits for 17. Or 2d6 plus 10. Piercing damage. If Baphomet moved at least 10 feet straight forward uh, towards the target immediately before the hit, the target takes an extra 16 or 3d6 piercing damage. If the target is a creature, it must succeed on a DC 25 save, uh, strength save, or be pushed 10. What? It's DC 10, not 2d6. That's what I meant. Um, you you all knew what I meant. That's the charge. That's the thing I've got in mind. Yeah, that's just uh, added into gore. Okay. Uh, a DC 25 strength save, or be pushed up to 10 feet away, and knocked prone. Now, the thing is, Frightful Presence isn't an action. On this one, each creature of Baphomet's choice within 120 feet of him has a limit of 10 feet of him. Unaware of him, must exceed our DC 18 wisdom saving throw or become prone for one minute. Frightened creatures can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of their turns, ending the effect on its death upon success. These later saves have disadvantage as Baphomet is a friendly <laughs> frightened creature. If it succeeds on any of these saves, it is called a crit and Naturally, the creature is immune to Baphomet's frightful presence for twenty four hours. Uh, yep, that's in actions on this uh, sheet. It's under actions, but it's not an action. It's the only dragons have it because they have it. Um, legendary actions. You can take three legendary actions, choosing from the options below. Uh, Baphomet makes one melee attack with heart cleaver. Uh, Baphomet makes one heart cleaver attack. And Baphomet moves up to his movement speed and makes a door attack. Baphomet moves up to his movement speed without provoking opportunity attacks and then makes a gore attack. So what you're telling me is he's just went, he's fucking taken out your barbarian. Uh, you're 40 feet away from me, but it's not his turn, you think you're cool. Someone takes their turn, he then turns around, runs 40 feet, smacks you. Someone else goes through then heart cleaver. And it's very much not on his turn. No, because charge, in this case, in fact, no, yeah, yeah, costs That's, two. That is exactly right. <laughs> uh, yes, he cannot do it twice be between turns, though, like charge. He can do three heart cleaver attacks or one charge, one heart cleaver. <laughs> so, uh, 
a gentle one, but I want to stick wrong. I don't have the original game start lock. I cannot find it. Uh, oh, I wanted to say I used 5v2s. It doesn't have it. Everything's been updated. Uh, um, it only has MP as men. Oh, no. Uh. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, come on. Just a second. Um, I have no original start lock for a grey one. Uh. I found one, but it's. Uh... Oh, here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Found it. Oh no! Full creature stat block is not available. That's because they've removed it since fucking. <sighs> and the thing is, I don't think anyone has the. Uh... Oh wait a minute. No, remove. Uh, I've got basic stat, like absolute pure basic. Not much more to say, not exactly. It's gone, my dude. Ah, oh, well. Although, apparently, grungs make great monks and fighters and barbarians. <laughs> because of the poison. Yeah, and default rules just fighter and ranger. Apparently, they make pretty decent rogues and paladins, too. Um, but what we can do, kind of, maybe is compare based off of a character sheet? Nope. Completely different. Small humanoid N element AC twelve hit points eleven. Poisonous skin standing weak. Yeah, it has all of those. Yep, they've always had those. Yeah, it actually looks pretty much the same anyway, so it's fine. It's always been a humanoid. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's, al it's always been a small humanoid. Um, if you're still immune to poison, you've still got like the characters. Yeah. Um, poison skin AC should be greater for Grung or other wise kinsmen to direct contact with Grung skin. Must exceed the DC 12 constitution saving throw or become poisoned for one month. Yep, a poison creature can no longer and direct, no longer direct contact with the ground can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself and its success. So yeah. Uh, uh, let's have a look at the. Any that you can think of that you might use that uh, you want to know? <laughs> no. um, hey, I didn't say it had to be for any of the campaigns I'm in. I'm happy. I'm happy to help. Um, dinosaurs? <laughs> Eagles or a Quetzalcoatl? Kobolds? What? Why would orcs shave? Let's find out.
I have the ox loaded. Large beast, cattle, unaligned. Yep. Armor class of 10. 11. Hit points 15. 2d 10 plus 4. Speed of 30. Speed of 30. Uh, strength, strength 18, dex 10, con 14, intelligence 2, <laughs> wisdom 10, charisma 4. No. Strength 18, dex 30, 12, constitution 14, intelligence 2. Wisdom 12, charisma 5. Passive perception of 10. <laughs> Passive perception of 11. <laughs> no languages. No languages. Quarter CR, 50 experience. Half CR, 100 experience. <laughs> Beast of Burden. Ox is considered to be one size larger for the purpose of determining its carrying capacity. If already considered a large beast. <laughs> Trampling charge. Ox moves at least 20 feet, takes more than two turns and hits it with a roar attack on the same turn. Target must succeed on a DC strength of 14 save, uh, strength saving save, or be knocked prone. If the target is prone, the ox can make a saved attack against it as a bonus action. Uh, actions, gore, melee weapon attack, plus 6 to hit, reach 5 feet, 1 target, hit for 7, 1d6 plus 4 piercing damage. If the, plus four. Bludgeoning. if the ox moved at least 20 feet straight towards the target, immediately before the hit, the target takes an extra 7, 2d6 piercing damage. Boom. Melee weapon attack, plus 6 to hit, reach 5 feet, 1 target, hit, 1d12 plus 4, bludgeoning. No. <laughs> Bumps in my body. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's only action is gore. <laughs> oh, man. I am confused. Oh, uh, wait, hold on. Hold on. Let me just make sure. I'm just making sure I'm right. I'm just trying to find another stat block to make sure I'm not like on some fucking bone bullshit. <laughs> There's a cow. Cow. Armor class 10, hit points 15, strength 18, 10, 14, 16. You're reading a cow stat block. No, because a cow has a half challenge rating. And a cow is spelled with K. <laughs> it's called a stench cow. No, no, you're, you're literally <laughs> reading the original cow stat block. Cow, large beast, unaligned, armor class 10, 50 hit points, 30 feet. Passive perception of 10. Charge roar. Doesn't have charge. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna send you something. <laughs> you could send me Jesus. <laughs> uh, Jesus was about that big. Uh, <laughs> am I really that big? <laughs> was enough emotional damage, maybe? <laughs> Uh, but no, um, that is the ox from like Monsters of the Multiverse. You can, you can literally put this on your fucking screen. Close it. Upload. Desktop. Pixel Boys. I guess I better take a screenshot of this. Thank you. Right, okay, so... Uh, As you can see, this is the official page. <laughs> Open original. Save image X. This isn't even some fucking, uh... Random thing. This is the actual fucking page. Right, so let's see. Add... Uh... Image... Add source. Hello, Leslie. M O T M Add Source Let's 
So there is. I'm assuming you're you're looking at. I am looking at your screen. There's the ox for Monsters of the Multiverse. Okay, that's very nice of how you've drawn it. <laughs> um, let's say image, add source. people to bear in mind that an ox is supposed to be separate like they're different statues for a reason let's go make it bigger so specifically see the cow Yeah. It's the same fucking thing. No, it doesn't have beasts and birds in my apologies, but that's a fucking cow. The only difference is uh the beasts and birds thing. No, challenge rating as well. Nope. One quarter. Oh one quarter, yeah. No, it's the same challenge rating. <laughs> it's literally it's the same fucking thing, except ox says beasts and birds. Oh that's funny. That's that is unnecessary. <laughs> Did they think we wouldn't notice? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, King's King, get in the chat. Tell us your opinion on this. It's a fucking cow. <laughs> they didn't even make something interesting out of it. They literally just took a cow and changed the name. I mean, technically, yeah. Don't, don't try and start playing with chat. Just to point out, there, there is no justification. Oh no, I was gonna say technically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna pretend I was gonna try and disagree, and then just like not disagree at all. You, you can't play devil's advocate for this one. Do you know what this reminds me of? What? Oh, no, 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 do not. Do, please turn that off. <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. Also, hello there, King's King. Hello. Jesus hello. Christ. As Wes would say, I hope you're not here. <laughs> oh. Thank you for letting me just sat here and fucking read that for a little while. <laughs> do you want my opinion? My opinion is Jesus Christ. That is a terrible opinion. That does not portray anything <laughs> constructive. Are you are you going to call it a an out? It, 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 it has made me irrationally angry. Are you going to call it a cow? Or are you going to call it an ox? Bear in mind this uh, is two people. Yeah. I believe it is a mistake to give for a cow or an ox. You need to go keep in mind. And talk. Keep in mind, cows cows officially no longer have a stat block in five e apparently now. Unless it's a stench cow with a K. And now how are we to see this? Because you've got the stench cow. The stench cows are misshapen bison native to the lower plains. These orange and green creatures defend themselves by ex exuding a miasma so hideous as to be toxic. Some mischievous, mischievous malevolent lizards. Is it with a C or a K? Literally just cows. Large beasts and lions, armor class 10, hit points 15, uh, 30 foot movement speed, charge, gore, nothing can hurt. Because. Literally no other stat blocker than you've, you've just read out to me. Uh huh. Right, so, so see. It's the stench cow, right? It's, it's exactly the same, right? Except it's got a challenge rating of half. It's got resistance to cold fire poison. It has dark vision. Cold fire and poison. 
uh, senses the dark vision 60 feet, a passive perception of 10, and it has an additional action, uh, it has an additional feature which is called stench. Any creature other than a stench cow that starts its turn within 5 feet of the stench cow must succeed in a DC 12 con save or be poisoned until the start of the creature's next turn. On a successful saving throw, the creature is immune to the stench of all stench cows for an hour. Five e kills. Mm -hmm. I remove the book. Mm -hmm. Empty PG. Empty in my mind. And uh, if you remove the book, things disappear. Like you cannot bring up past the dreadlock. You cannot bring up demagogy. You cannot bring up grunt. It's because Volos Guide to Monsters. Yeah, it's because they were in Volos Guide to Monsters or. Mordecai is Tom of Foes. Hmm. That's weird. Cow. Literal cow comes from Volo's Guide to Monsters. Page 206. Also found in VI. Yeah, that's because, uh, it means that if you just completely overwrite it, you're fucking mental. But, uh, yeah. That is some grade A vampire shit. That is some grade A. But anyway, we will have to leave it there because we have D and D this evening, and I need to get home. Cool. Oh wow, there's so little stuff left from uh, Modern Kind and Storm of Foes and the uh, Volos Guide to Monsters. Like in this, like just in general, the seventeen items that still remain. Uh, the Abyssal Wretch, the Booyag Booyag Booyag, the Booyag Caster, Booyag Whip, Booyag Wiel Wielder, Cow, Elithlich, uh, Elithlich, Mind Flare Scion, uh, Mind Flare Scion, Orc Blade of Elneval, Orc Claw of Luthic, Orc Hand of Yurtris, Orc Nurtured One of Yurtris, Orc Red Fang of Shargrass, Roth, Zvart Speaker, Yuanti Malison Type 4, and Yuanti Malison Type 5. That's it. That is indeed it. And with the exception of the Abyssal Rich, all of them are from Volos. all of you for joining us um whether you watch this live over on gaming chin or whether you're watching this via upload Ooh. to youtube and or my twitch but um yeah this has been the new book ladies and gentlemen now my uh as gary springer used to do final opinions oh i, I found grung from follows guide to monsters on okay. 5e tools do you know what you do you un, uh, unselect, reprinted, and whatever the other one was. Already unselected, unselect, reprinted. Yeah, and there was another one was there. The yeah. Okay, so by this logic, I should have explained how much power. Yeah, from uh, Modern Kynans, Tome of Foes. Yep. Oh. Oh, no. You are welcome. No, hold on. Hold on. I need you to bring up a dragon. Dragon. Um, Fizzbands. Fizzbands. Okay, so dragon. It comes with a stat. Let's go for. Just dragon. Um. Many dragons, yes. Let's go for an ancient black dragon. Fuck it. 
Ancient Black Dragon. Yep, uh, Monster Manual, CR21. My personal views on this new book are very um, somewhat unassumable. Um, I do not like why this book is a thing. I think it would be great for some people, but for the most part, there's just nothing there truly groundbreaking for me. I um. I think it's uh, going to be a good way to get uh, newer players into D&D, give them a, a light um, introduction to some of the races. Um, but uh, I don't really have I don't really have any positive or negative opinions on it. Um, it is just there. <laughs> Everything is now everything between free ancestors. Sorry, right, I'll keep playing Grung. I don't get free ancestry, free ancestry that way. Charmed is literally white. But no, um, I'm, I'm not a fan of why this book's a thing. It's not overly offensive as I thought it would be in the beginning. I think it might be King's King moving their mic. <laughs> a fan of how this book came about a lot of it to me is very much pandering I feel like it's a lot of people going we want everything to be the same so that we can be different which it sort of doesn't um, yeah but uh, yeah as a DM go fuck yourself as a DM who uses online things like 5e2 to prep for combat encounters go fuck yourself because now I need to rework half a dozen things that I didn't have to rework before, and I'm a lazy bastard. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure Jack will in time be able to talk about the like using the stuff in it as a player. Uh, I would have to experiment with some of it in one of the campaigns we do together, or even just do a a couple of short scenarios uh, to test it, but uh, perhaps in time. Um, yes. But, uh, oh well. Until then, we'll live with it. So, for me, that is all. Yep, and uh, that's been it from us here at Gaming Ken. As always, I've been Jack. I've been joined by the Evil Scotsman, and this video will be going up on their Twitch or YouTube Um at some point, so be sure to uh, show them some love over there, wherever they decide to upload it. Um, and as always, as always, if you're here at Gaming if you want to be our friend, as I do say far too often in these times, I do. please do stay safe out there. Most trying thing is me saying trying things. I hit the record button instead of the live button, so I'm now both recording and live, apparently. I thought you were recording anyway. Oh no, I just decided to stream it. Um, I could just download the stream and send you it, it's fine. Okay. Anyway, and